President Bush declared that Iran is not only evil, but on the axis of evil, making it basically evil and square. Most Americans agree with that view, and considering how Obama treats Iran, he shares the same viewpoint. However, none of them is a good source, and to answer whether Iran is evil or not, let us look at its history. Up until 1906, Iran was a monarchy and the Shah had absolute power, which he used to sell out his people to Great Britain, France and Russia, the imperial powers of that time. This made him very wealthy, but caused massive poverty. Ultimately, his people revolted and overthrew him. A prime minister and 156 members of parliament were elected, a constitution established and the crown became a divine gift given to the Shah by the people. Iran became democratic but kept the Shah. In 1908, oil was found in Iran and sparked the interest of the imperial countries. Between 1906 and 1925, Iran was almost always in some kind of conflict between the Democrats, the Shah and the imperial powers. In the end, Reza Shah seized power of British support and became Shah in 1925, while the British gained control of the oil industry. World War II destroyed its balance. Britain and Russia became allies and needed Iranian oil and infrastructure. Iran, however, kept good relations with Germany and aimed for neutrality. They also refused to expel German citizens and give logistic support for the Allies. The result was an invasion by Russia and Britain, which forced the Shah to abdicate and his son Reza Shah Pahlavi became the new Shah in 1941. It took until 1946 for the last Allied troop to leave Iran. The parliament survived all of this and could still elect the prime minister. The most important one was Mossadegh, elected in 1951. By a series of emergency decrees, he amassed more power than the Shah himself. His priority was to nationalize the oil production, taking away the control from the British. The Time magazine crowned him the man of the year of 1951. This time it was the USA to intervene. Having a cold war ahead, they needed a secure oil supply. Mossadegh had to be overthrown. The grandson of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Kermit Roosevelt Jr., was sent to instigate Project AX, aiming to get rid of Mossadegh. They succeeded in 1953, Mossadegh had to leave and Shah Pahlavi regained his power. Pahlavi started the White Revolution, it was his attempt to westernize Iran, and he introduced useful things like education for the masses, transfer of land to peasants, voting rights for women, and social security systems for old people, women and children. However, it was not enough to solve the economic problems of the country, which meant poverty for many people. The actual aim of the policy was to weaken the traditional powers in Iran, the clergy and the landlords. Plus, his rule became more dictatorial, using violence and corruption to centralize as much power as he could. Still, the growing middle class considered him only a western puppet. And so in 1979, the people revolted against him and were led by Ayatollah Khomeini who was seeking a theocracy in Iran. The revolution succeeded and the title of the Shah was abandoned. The theocrats also eliminated competing political forces, murdering Marxists and socialists by the thousands. Iran became a theocracy, but still left some democratic elements. The greatest threat came from Saddam Hussein, dictator of Iraq. He invaded Iran in 1980, attempting to exploit the chaos of the revolution and seize Iranian oil. The war lasted 8 years and killed 600 to 800,000 Iranians, and it costed 500 billion US dollars. At the end, Iran won and was angry. Saddam Hussein was basically a US minion, receiving US funds, weaponry, special training force forces, military intelligence and even direct military support during the war. Hussein only became evil to the west when he invaded Kuwait in 1990, which caused the first Gulf War. After the war, Israel became the greatest threat. In the eyes of Iran, Israel is a minion of the USA. It receives massive US funds and military support, much like Iraq under Hussein. It occupies the sacred land of the Muslim faith, it is oppressing Muslims in Palestine and Gaza, and it is already conducting sabotage and assassinations in Iran. Since 2010, four Iranian nuclear scientists were killed by Israeli agents. A fifth murder failed. The Stuxnet virus turned out to be aimed at Iran's nuclear facilities and could have only been made in the USA. For Iran, Israel is a hostile imperialist. The current situation is that Iran's largest neighbor, Iraq and Afghanistan, were both conquered by the USA and Israel, the closest US ally, constantly demands war on Iran. Considering how much more powerful the USA is, this is an existential threat to Iran. The solution for them is to build a nuclear bomb. Britain did the exact same thing when it felt threatened by the Soviet forces after World War II. That is to say, Iran is by far not an innocent victim. It actually has severe problems. It is supporting terrorism, restricts women's rights, lacks of free press, oppresses, tortures, is undemocratic and corrupt. However, 
putting it in relation, Iran, the USA and Israel are quite similar. For example, in Iran, the highest scholars of Islam elect the prime minister candidates, which is called undemocratic. In the USA, every president needs to convince the rich people to support their campaign with money, otherwise they do not stand a chance to get elected president. The means are different, but the outcome is the same. The elites have superior power compared to the commoners. The USA also uses torture in Guantanamo Bay, used to treat Bradley Manning inhumane, and now is persecuting Edward Snowden. Similar issues apply to Israel. It conquered Palestinian land, oppresses Muslims, and now is supporting terror abroad. So if we ask whether Iran is evil, it depends on the standard we apply. If we say yes, it is evil, then we should add the USA and Israel to the same axis of evil. Otherwise, we judge with double standards.